In this uh, video lecture, we will analyze this paper and we will go through the explanation of the answer and we will also talk about the strategy how to clear UGC net. I will suggest you some tips as well. So first question tells you, besides being a playwright, who among the following has translated Homer? So this question is from simply history of English literature and uh, you can take it uh, from theory as well. So who translated? So first is Ben Johnson, second option is Thomas Decker, third is Thomas Hayward and George Chapman. So answer is George Chapman. As you know that George Chapman has uh, translated many of his works. George Chapman was a playwright as well and who translated Homer. He translated the Iliad and the Odyssey into English in early 17th century. So such questions uh, are asked and uh, you need to know. Uh, now here what is important? You should know what uh, his genre is and what he did and when he did. Okay, so if you are studying English literature, you should know all these three parts. Uh, so, uh, if you have joined our course, you probably you know that we are, if we are making summaries, what we do in those summaries, we talk about characters, we talk about themes, we talk about important events and uh, the publication dates. Okay, so we focus uh, the video lectures. Now, these things in our video lectures. The second one is which of the following is not true about lyrical ballads. So simply this question is if uh, when it got published, this question is from history of English literature. If I'm telling you all these things, uh, now the reason behind this is uh, I want you to focus all in all the parts. In many videos, you are, probably you have seen that people are speaking that, okay, uh, do your history of English literature well and uh, you can clear the exam paper but this is not true you have to study all the parts of english literature okay you need to study history you need to study theory you need to study you know the terms you need to know the context and you need to study the years and dates okay and the name of the books and uh, the themes behind and the story behind of those books so if you are studying uh, english literature in this way you will also enjoy the work uh, works and uh, history of english literature so question is about lyrical ballads so when we talk about lyrical ballads so william wordsworth comes in our mind 1798 comes in mind and romanticism comes in mind so let's go through the answers here it is manifesto of romantic poetry this is quite true about this it is it turns english poetry away from the social and intellectual sophistication of 17th century so what happened in 17th century uh, it was full of intellectual sophistication and it was confined uh, uh, confined of reason and intellect as well so it takes third one tells you it takes poetry out of confines of reason and intellect to unravished and unspoiled beauties of nature. It is very particular about the form and structure of poem. So this is not true because it is asked that which is not true about lyrical ballads. So if we will go through the uh, explanation here, it is very particular about the form and structure of the poem is not true about lyrical ballads. The collection of poetry which was published by William Wordsworth and Samuel Tyler Coleridge in 1790s is considered the manifesto of romantic poetry. So such explanation we will give you with the solved exams paper and uh, if you wish to join our group for uh, solved uh, um, MCQs uh, daily you can join our group as well. Which of the following observations are true about Roland Barthes contribu contribution to literary theory? So you can see that this word, when this co word comes to our minds, we uh, think about literary theory. So this question is from literary theory. He rejected the model of structural analysis of narrative. He perceived meaning as an uh, effect of various interconnection among the linguistic codes. He identified the various codes found in the process of structuration. He played a significant role in the development of semiology. Okay, so he uh, he was uh, related to semiology. He questioned the concept of literary criticism as an act of uncovering some hidden truth intended by the author. So the answer is uh, third one. You can see he was a French literary theorist. You should remember this one. 
and uh, he talked about the study of sign symbol sign and symbol in language and culture next is the writer the writer and the world by v s paul s so here again uh, you will see the you, you must know the background of the work so answers are here or uh, options are here now uh, novel travelog collection of essay or non fiction so the answer is collection of essay and if we talk about the part of english literature this is from indian writings in english okay so you uh, if you'll go through all question papers you will see that all parts are important to crack the ugc net exam collection of essays is correct answer the writer and world is collection of essays written by vs nepal now uh, he was a twinda born british writer and novel laureate as well so such explanation gives you a uh, great help here are two statements and if you get such statements and reason and assertion type of questions we have to have great knowledge of english literature marxist represent marxism as a scientific account of social change the marxist ideology believes that culture is a mirror of social life and the artist is an engineer of the human soul educating the working class so if we talk about marxism uh, it is simply it is uh, it uh, uh, depends or it explains about you know social life here the answer is one both a and r are correct r is the correct explanation of a and uh, if we go through this whole uh, explanation we will see here that uh, it states uh, the assertion states that marxist represent uh, marxism as a as a scientific account of social change how society changes and uh, the class struggle it talks about and this talks about evolution of capitalist societies okay it interp uh, interprets social phenomena so such words if we are studying any theory okay like marxist theory we are studying uh, we should make notes of such words and if we have clear understanding of such words or uh, uh, you know we have uh, in our dictionary such words we can uh, we can analyze the answers well the reason states that marxist ideology believes in culture is a mirror of social life and the artist is an engineer of human soul educating the working class okay and this is accurate about marxism now let's come to the next one the ancient and the modern quarrel in western literary criticism appears during so when it happened kab hua ye okay so ancient and modern jo quarrel tha wo kab hua when it happened so first is 100 bc uh, fifth century c and uh, 16th century or 12th century so answer is third here we will see that uh, the quarrel was between literary critics who advocated for the revival of classical uh, ca classical or ancient literature and those who championed the new forms of literature so there were uh, you know uh, two sections uh, who were advocating the classical okay classics they loved classics or uh, they wanted uh, classics and the second second were uh, who championed the new forms of english literature okay so they had the quarrel now let's come to the next one uh, is again assertion and reason type of question in so far as we are taught how to read what we engage are not text but paradigms and reason are we appropriate meaning now uh, from text according to what we need or desire or in other words according to critical assumption of the uh, predispositions that we bring to it so your answer here we will not discuss this one uh, answer is one you can uh, you can see this one now let's go for the next next eighth uh, question eight here which of the following critics is associated with the term uh, contraparental reading so this uh contra parental reading when edward said uh, options are here michael bakhtin edward said roland bath or jack strada okay so your answer is edward said and he said okay read something contra parentally he said that read something contra parentally okay so what does he mean by this 
uh, we cannot go through you know this uh, word in depth right now because it it will take uh, another 10 minutes to make you understand uh, all this but uh, in short if i'll tell you in short uh, contraparental uh, reading tells you that uh, try to get the hidden meanings okay try to get the hidden meaning not uh, what text says uh, it it tells you that try to get the hidden meaning okay hidden meaning of the text simple all right and if we uh, let me let me tell you that uh, there something uh, edward said wrote about this method and uh, that will give you a little bit clear picture of this uh, contraparental reading we must therefore read the great uh, canonical text with an effort to draw out okay canonical text ka simple meaning hota hai famous text ye aap matlab ek uh, tarah se aap ise kya kar sakte hain le sakte hain mind mein uh, so what he says we must therefore read the great canonical text with an effort to draw out extend give emphasis and voice to what is silent okay what he is saying he is saying that what is silent or marginally present marginally present okay marginally present uh, marginally present or ideologically represented in such works okay so if something is silent and marginally present means that is a hidden meaning and if we are reading something contraponentally we have to take out such things and uh, why we take uh, out such meaning such uh, silent things out uh, because we want to make things understand to other people as well okay so this is uh, this idea is from edward said like he uh, he gives uh, you know example from uh, pride and uh, prejudice and in men's park uh, jane austen jane austen's uh, men's field park okay so he gives if it is it can be asked like uh, where he gives uh, example and uh, which work he uh, you know suggests for reading uh, so jane austen's means mansfield uh, park there is uh, you know protagonist so what he does the protagonist what he does protagonist uh, uh, benefactor owns a plantation in antigua and uh, profits from imperial slave trade so he is getting from uh, you know he is doing slave uh, trade there so what he what we can uh, take the idea we can uh, uh, we, you know uh, why uh, here i'm just uh, trying to make it easy but uh, you know making it clear in uh, in a few minute is uh, really a tough job but here the another meaning you can um, see that you can uh, talk about imperialism as well okay so like if you are reading mansfield park okay mansfield park you are uh, reading by jane austen you can uh, there are two ways there are two ways one way is you can just read it okay and you can just read it and enjoy this work second is you can talk it contraponentally and you can take out the hidden meanings like here you will see you will read about protagonist and he is doing slave trade so you can come to know about imperialism means hidden meaning hidden meaning what i told you about hidden meaning is imperialism and you can get the idea about imperialism uh, through this work okay so or uh, colonialism uh, so antigua was antigua was a colony of british britishers okay so it was a colony so we can talk about colony as well so there there are so many ideas we can uh, talk about if we are reading contraponentally and this word this word was given by edward said so in next videos i will give you some uh, you know more detail about this these uh, literary theory and literary words uh, for this uh, for the time sake this is enough i think now let's come to the question 9 uh, first one is hamlet second macbeth julius caesar and uh, othello so we know that uh, these works are uh, you know uh, from william uh, shakespeare 
and uh, we can take these examples from history of English literature. Okay, so these uh, got published or written in uh, 1600, 1606 uh, 6 and 1604 and 1599 Othello. Now let us come to the next one, this one, uh, match uh, the following. First is uh, faces, uh, here you have the options Wilfred Owen, T. S. Eliot, Ellen Ginsberg and W. H. Auden. So answer is not written here, but I will try to uh, you know give you some examples with, uh, with, uh, with these lines. Okay? So uh, faces, so first you can uh, see here, faces along the bar cling to their uh, average day, this was by W. H. Auden. Here you can make the notes, W. H. Auden. And uh, let me uh, tell you that you cannot study all the poems, okay, but at least you should go through 100 to 200 poems if you wish to clear UGC net. And uh, for, for this purpose, uh, we have made a series of uh, uh, you know poems as well and we are making we are adding them to our uh, you know video course where we are uh, uh, explaining the poems in detail uh, so that you can learn and I will also give you some uh, shortcut ways to remember all these lines like I remember all all these lines just because of uh, you know how I read those poems I how I read those poems and how I read my poems so what I do is in if the po poem has you know 50, uh, 50 lines now what I do is I take out uh, uh, 8 to 10 important words which usually give me you know idea that uh, who has written uh, these poems or that particular poem. So you, ne you don't need to remember all those 50 lines but those uh, you know, eight to ten words, or four to four to five words are enough to understand that uh, from which this poem, these uh, lines are taken. Like faces among the bar cling to their average day. This is from W. H. Auden. Okay. The next one is the awful, uh, awful daring of moments surrenders. Uh, so you can see that this is. Uh, like uh, such lines, you can uh, see that. And this work is uh, very important. Uh, this is by uh, T. S. Eliot, Wasteland. Okay, the Wasteland. Let me write it clear here so that you can note down them. And uh, T. T. S. Eliot has written these uh, this line, the awful uh, daring of a moment surrender, in his work, the Wasteland. And uh, mm, uh, there are five parts. So, what this uh, thunder said was the what the thunder said. You can um, you can note down this. Next line for you is uh, bent double like old beggars, like old beggars under a sex. So, this is by Wilfred Owen. Wilfred Owen uh, has composed these lines. I saw the best minds of my generation uh, destroyed by madness. And sometimes if you don't know, uh, you know, the last line, so you can go for uh, simply the answers like you have uh, done T.S. Eliot and W.H. Auden, you know, and Wilfred Owen you have done. So simply, the fourth one is by Ellen Ginsberg. Ellen Ginsberg. So you can note down all this. Uh, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. So with this, uh, we end this session, and uh, I will I will discuss more uh, some more questions in next video lecture. Uh, and uh, till then, goodbye. Take care. See you next.